Let's head out to the first conversation now. Nigeria's payment landscape has undergone significant um, transformations in recent years, driven by technological advancement, regulatory reforms, and shifting consumer behaviors. Despite progress, challenges persist, including fragmentation, inefficiencies, and limited access to financial um, services. Well, joining us to analyze the industry now, we have uh, Dada Olusegun, the CEO um, Zojo Pei, joining me via Zoom. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. Fantastic. It's great to have you. So, you know, looking at um, the financial payment system in Nigeria, what would you say are the primary pain points and um, how can they be addressed, you know, at this point? We know most of the banks now are, are upgrading their uh, banking, you know, core banking system at this point, and we know customers are complaining of service disruptions. Even though some banks say, don't worry, your, our banking services will not be disrupted, well, even though we're doing the upgrade at this time. But, you know, talk to me about these pain points you see. Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Ladi. First of all, I would say that um, looking at where we are in Nigeria currently, we've come in a long way. We've seen a lot of free progress happening in the past decade whereby we see that people making use of mobile payments, USSD, code, and also online wallets. And right now, you can see people transfer money to their phones, or even to buy things on the road, and also to do their side puzzle without even going to the bank. And like you rightly said, there are still a lot of hurdles that we need to cross currently. And that is, um, some of them are due to the fact that we have a lot of unbank and underbank people, especially in the rural areas. And uh, some of them probably don't uh, trust the system currently or just don't have access. The other aspect also is around the network infrastructure, which is a vibe killer, if I should say. Um, we are at the supermarket trying to scan your QR code and bam, there's a transaction failure. It's really frustrating. And the other aspect, too, I would say is the um, transaction, high transaction cost, which we've seen happening over the years, even with the recent security level. And has also been put in place and this really affects a lot of the you know um, people in the society which sometimes allow everyone to stick to cash and lastly we can't also um, take away the fact that cash is still king currently in our economy and we just need to continue improving on our digital infrastructure and our cashless policy to see how we can be able to take that in the next Right, and, and talking about you know cashless policy, I remember you know recently I was trying to make a payment uh, in Kenya with my Nigerian um, card, and that's my Naira card. You know at this point, and it, it didn't work. It, it couldn't work. I tried it, you know, multiple times. I tried different cards, so you know it still stands that you can't make um, international payments with your you know Naira card. Um, that's for traditional banks. And I'm wondering at some point, um, do you think uh, fintechs will be able to help out you know when it comes to that because my kenyan friend said you know they could also they could spend their own um shilling card in nigeria you know without any issues so you know talk to me about this is it something the fintechs can actually uh, help in their bridging does this gap yes i believe um the fintech can be able to help but the truth is it's not just a fintech that needs to be able to coming to achieve this. It's all in about, um, it's all around collaboration. Collaboration with the Nigerian government, collaboration with the banking system, collaboration even with the techos also. Uh, currently, I know we are making a lot of waves in the in the financial space and there is still a lot of room for growth. And like you rightly said, you got your Kenya friends, you know, with their MPESA. There's a whole lot happening there, and which you can also see happening in Nigeria with the USSD payment that has been a game changer for us in the past, in the past, uh, I would say, decade or so, whereby it provides financial access to everyone, even without the internet. And like you already mentioned with that, regarding making international payments, it goes beyond just um, maybe the infrastructure. Again, one of the major problems we've seen of recent time has been the um, high FX rates, which has really affected a lot of these uh, international transactions, and that has limited the INTOs, the bank, to be very um, cautious regarding making those services available. And apart from that, also is the fact that there is a need for more interoperability that needs to really occur, and that's probably from the system, infrastructure, and policies. 
just like what we see happening in the, with India with their, with their UPIS system, whereby it allows payments to be able to make easily across various platforms without any form of um, issues. So I believe that um, with the right policy, with the right collaboration, and also with the um, FX issues being addressed, we can be able to see a lot of improvement happening in that sector, in that aspect as we move forward. Yeah, because at this point, it seems this um, FX issue impacts everything. Because I remember in the past, you know, you could use your Naira card to make um, international payments uh, easily without, you know, any stress. But uh, ever since the Naira lost um, all of that value and the unification, it's been, uh, it's been a real hassle at this point. But talk to me about how, you know, regulatory frame, uh, frameworks can be optimized to support you know, some innovative uh, payment solutions. Yeah. Um, on that aspect, which we've seen a lot of happening in the past years from CBN, because CBN has been a guide and also a gatekeeper regarding this, and they've really been helping to shape the future of payments in Nigeria. I would say, looking at what the CBN has done over the years in terms of driving innovation, there is still a whole lot more that, can, that needs to be done. Earlier, I mentioned about uh, collaboration. For example, there's a need for a lot of collaboration between even the CBN and the NCC, which is telco, but there's a lot that has to do with those form of um, synergy in being able to take the payment to the next level. Firstly, we can see the uh, policy in which CBN has done regarding cashless, and we can see the improvement that has made over the years, and also with the provision of various form of licenses, such as the PSP, MMTO, IMTO. That's even open doors for organizations like HAS, Zijapi, and every other fintech in the industry to be able to come in and be able to make an impact in trying to drive digitalization and uh, looking at how to be able to address some of these uh, challenges. And the other aspect is with the policy we are also seeing happening within the blockchain industry, whereby it's CBN even going ahead with the in era, we can see that there's a bold step for us in moving to the future. And I want to believe that uh, the key to all of this is to keep the policy being flexible. If we put too many rules in place, it might be able to, it might affect innovation. And the other day, we might not be able to get where we need to uh, be. I believe that the CBI needs to be more flexible, is to put the right policies in place, and at the end of the day, we can see innovation happen. Right, and you know, we we know the growth of uh, mobile money services and uh, digital wallets. Um, talk to me about the role that these um, two are playing. You know, when it comes to expanding financial inclusion, we keep talking about you know getting the rural areas you know financially you know included. So talk to me about how far you know most of these mobile payments have gone you know so far. So far, I would say currently right now, there's a lot happening in the rural area, but a lot can still be, it, uh, can still happen. You know, some of them are probably reduced to lack of adequate infrastructure that we see happening within these various uh, areas. Earlier, I mentioned about the um, network issues that we have that do give us a form of uh, a fight killer. So currently, we've seen a lot happening, especially leveraging on the agent network, which has been there for a while. And we've seen a lot of people within the rural area taking a whole lot in place. Today, we've also seen fintechs and organizations even going down to the extent of, you know, coming up with new innovations such as solar power ATMs, whereby power should not be a concern in these various areas. And this can be able to help in achieving that inclusion we are trying to um, bring together. Another aspect is also the mobile POS devices that are that are being used in place of the ATMs. And with this, transactions can be able to happen easily at any point in time. And lastly, I will still also mention about the partnership, which is very key. There is a need for a lot of partnership, a lot of collaboration between the fintechs, the telcos, the bank, because the fintech has the infrastructure, the bank, uh, the fintech has the idea and innovation. The tech who has the infrastructure and the bank has stability. I believe that when this partnership comes together, we can be able to do a whole lot more and be able to drive inclusion within the right. Economy. And talking about you know this um, partnership, you know with the telcos. Um, recently, one of the uh, the major you know telcos in Nigeria says um, that if they do not get a tariff increase soon, that they're going to 
they're going to go out of business, you know, technically. So um, are you guys in the fintech space, you know, getting nervous when you hear um, such statements? Yes, actually, we, we have because at the end of the day, when those type of increments comes in, the, our customers are the ones that will really um, also sometimes bear the burden, or sometimes it might in, it might increase our cost of operation. And as a fintech, one of our major aim and goal, especially for us in Zoja Tech, is to see how we can provide uh, Zoja Pay is to see how we can provide our customers with amazing services, amazing solution. That's you know that comes with a lot of more benefits. For example, carrying out transa transaction without transaction fee, being able to have access to various forms of personalized services. And when this various cost comes in, it affects what uh, it affects various services we can be able to provide to our customers. So yes, it's a lot of concerns, and that's why I would also believe that with effective collaboration between the various regulatory bodies, such as the NCC and CBN, it can be able to help us to achieve, you know, a balanced approach to all of this. Right. And um, just yesterday, one of the WhatsApp groups that I'm a part of, um, one of the members got hacked and the person, that the, the hacker, you know, started asking us uh, for funds, you know, pretending to be, you know, our friend. And he put up an account number in there and it was one of the fintech, you know, accounts. And I'm wondering, you know, is it easy, you know, for the fintechs to be able to flag such accounts and maybe, you know, apprehend some of these um, hackers. Is it possible? Is it easier with fintechs? Okay. Um, the truth is security is a major concern and it's everything in payments. And um, again, without trust, nothing would work. And this issue you just mentioned right now is a major, is a major concern. But however, with the emerging technologies we have happening, such as the AI, we can be able to use this currently to be able to detect frauds, whereby we are able to keep eyes on various forms of every transactions and even patterns that occur. So it's with such that you mentioned right now, it can with AI powered fraud detection system, we can be able to detect any form of anomalies and we can be able to even stop such um, account or transactions from being happening. So that is currently um, in place. And another aspect is also the um, aspect of collaboration. For example, within the bank, within the bank, among the banks, fintech, and also the techos, whereby when data are being shared around fraud trends, I believe everyone wins. I don't think it's all a matter of, you know, something is happening, people keep it to themselves. We need to share data, we need to share information and be able to ensure that uh, be able to achieve that synergy, that environment whereby security is everyone's concern. And lastly, it's so about education to our users. I believe that an informed customer is a secure customer. And with that, we can be able to eliminate such issues you raised. All right, definitely. We hope you know, these um, hackers don't get more WhatsApp accounts you know, going forward. Thank you so much. Uh, that was uh, Dadao Lushego, CEO of Zoja Pay. It was great having you today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And remember to stay safe out there with your WhatsApp accounts and all of it because they keep trying every day. They've tried me so many times. Oh, we'll take a break now. When we come back, we're going to head straight to the markets, find out what's happening uh, with the fixed income market, get a review for the week. That's in a moment. Just stay with us. <laughs>